Now again, recognizing that we all can't get to the stillness just like that, Holy Spirit continues, if stillness seems difficult, pick a thought of mine that you have read or known from another experience. Focus on that thought. Remain loose enough in your focus that you allow a flow of other thoughts to enter. If they seem related to the thought you have chosen, go with them and see where they take you. That is me, carrying you where I would have you go. But if the thoughts coming in seem to be distractions, observe them and let them go, reminding yourself that you choose not to be distracted now. Return to your thought of focus and wait for the flow of thoughts that comes from me. This reminds me of a section in NTI where Holy Spirit says when a thought comes into your mind, just simply ask, is this thought coming from my heart? And the Holy Spirit says if you ask, it is the heart that answers. And so if, if the thought is, if the answer is yes, then listen to that thought, trust it. If the answer is no, then put it aside. We need these tools of discernment in the beginning because we are confused. Because we do think that we are Regina <laughs> and Cynthia and Dan and Bill. So at first we need these tools, this questioning But the interesting thing about the discernment is when we are questioning a thought to ask if it's coming from Holy Spirit or ego, we have to be willing to question without thinking, without figuring out. Because if we go into, let's say, our intellectual knowledge of what we learned in A Course in Miracles or NTI, and we try to figure out for ourselves with the head, whether a thought comes from Holy Spirit or ego, ego will get in there. And ego will tell you that a Holy Spirit thought is ego. And we will find ourselves discarding the Holy Spirit. So when we ask these questions of discernment, we actually want to do it as if we are asking an other. When you ask another, there's an openness in your mind where you aren't thinking and trying to figure out. You are waiting for the other to give you the answer to your question. There's a pause in your mind. So when we're asking within if this thought is from the Holy Spirit or the ego, we want to ask as if we're asking an other. And then an answer is given. It might be at a level that's just simply called intuition. But because we asked, we can trust the answer that's given. So many people hear the Holy Spirit and doubt it. Hear the Holy Spirit and trust it. As you hear the Holy Spirit and trust it, it grows within you. You begin to recognize it as your true voice. You begin to listen to it more. You begin to live from it more. You begin to be it. And you begin to allow the other identity to slip away as meaningless. It's not who you are. And this is where our real joy comes from. So Holy Spirit is telling us that if stillness seems difficult, we can start by picking a thought. It might be something we read in NTI or A Course in Miracles, or it might be the single quiet thought for the day or, you know, something. But picking a thought and focusing on it. 
and allow related thoughts to come into the mind. And as those related thoughts come into the mind, we can simply ask, is this thought reinforcing? Is this thought continuing the thought that I have focused on? Or is this thought a distraction from it? And if we don't try to figure out the answer, if we ask as if we are asking an other, the answer will simply be known. And if the answer is that it is reinforcing, if the answer is that it is continuing, then in that case we want to begin to listen to our own thoughts because our Holy Spirit is speaking to us. This is where I would grab a pen and begin writing them down. Some people may grab a recorder and start speaking them. A friend this morning felt she had clarity and she told me she didn't write it down and later she said she forgot it. And it does seem like that happens. So it does seem to be helpful to capture our Holy Spirit thoughts when they come through. But after a time, that's not even necessary because after a time what happens is we begin to realize that we don't need to learn our Holy Spirit at an intellectual level. We begin to realize that our Holy Spirit, which is speaking to us during these periods of meditation, is with us always because it's who we are. And we begin to realize that we do not need to study our Holy Spirit or memorize our Holy Spirit. We only need to turn to it more often. We only need to be willing to put our thoughts aside as meaningless more often. Our opinions, our assessments, and ask more often, what am I to do? What am, I, what am I to say? How am I to see this? And that guidance is always there. It's always there in the moment if we remember to ask. And if a thought comes into the mind that we aren't certain of, we practice in the same way. We ask as if we are asking an other. Is this a thought I should trust, or is this a thought I should let go? And if we hear trust this thought, then we follow it in trust. This is where our real joy comes from, from not thinking from turning within to the stillness which is the wisdom which is always there and letting it guide us more and more and more and until the point where it's the only voice that we hear until that point of enlightenment or awakening or realization of self we just keep doing that. We just keep surrendering in the moment. We just keep putting aside our thoughts as meaningless. My opinion of this situation does not matter. What I think here is unimportant. Holy Spirit, what am I to do? What am I to say? How am I to see this? This is where our real joy comes from. Holy Spirit ends by saying, You will know my guidance when it comes. It will lift you up. 